the next drug category I'm going to be covering is cardiac glycosides. Um, cardiac glycosides are um, plant alkaloids. They're from uh, the foxglove, which is a plant in the digitalis family and has been used for centuries as treatment for congestive heart failure. Cardiac glycosides act directly on the cardiac muscle to improve myocardium contraction. This increases blood flow to all organs, including the kidneys, which causes di uh, diuresis. Cardiac glycosides also decrease conduction through the AV node. They act on the SA node to prolong the refractory period of the AV node. Um, you want to note the various points in the heart that cardiac glycosides affect. This explains why cardiac um, dysrhythmias of many kinds can be seen with, the suck with toxicity of cardiac glycoside drugs. <clears throat> cardiac glycosides are used to treat congestive heart failure and to slow ventricular rate in persons with AFib and atrial flutter. Um, an example of cardiac glycoside, probably the most common, is digoxin. Um, when cardiac glycosides are started, a digitalizing dose may be given to quickly raise the serum drug level to therapeutic levels. Cardiac glycosides stay in the body from two days to three weeks. They are cumulative. Because they are cumulative, it is necessary to discover toxicity early. Oral forms are usually used for maintenance doses and sometimes for digitalizing doses. Um, in the case of digoxin, the usual maintenance dose is 0.125 to 0.5 milligrams um, PO daily. Digoxin onsets in half hour to two hours and lasts typically two to six days. Um, a little more about digoxin. Um, like I said in the last slide, um, the uh, a digitalizing dose for digoxin can be given in either IV or PO form. Um, like I said in the last slide, the usual maintenance dose is 0.125 to 0.5 um, milligrams, and uh, the onset is half hour to two hours in the last two to six days. I have this in writing, so it's you know more clear for you, in case you didn't get me the first time. Um, you're going to want to uh, have lab studies done before administering the digitalizing dose. The patient should have a hemoglobin. Um, hematocrit, serum electrolytes, and liver and renal function studies done um, because uh, uh, digoxin is excreted via the kidneys, the dose must be reduced in persons with renal dysfunction, so keep that in mind. Um, an ECG should also be done before uh, giving the digitalizing dose. Because of the way digitalis medications act on the heart, bradycardia, and a variety of dysrhythmias may develop with toxicity. Do not administer digitalis preparations if the adult apical pulse is below 60 beats per minute, and um, if the child's apical pulse is below 90 to 110, depending on the age of the child. The nurse should monitor the apical pulse for one minute. Um, you're going to want to note rate, rhythm, and quality before administering digitalis preparations. Um, common side effects for digoxin digitalis um, is uh, their GI symptoms. Um, you're going to want to check for anorexia, nausea, and vomiting. Um, also, uh, central nervous system symptoms can in um, that include headache, fatigue, and muscle weakness are possible, and uh, visual disturbances um, th that include uh, patients having a green or yellow cast to their vision are possible side uh, side effects. On a uh, interesting note I found in my research. Uh, it is said that Van Gogh, the painter, uh, used to eat uh, foxglove, which is uh, digitalis, um, during his uh, yellow period of painting. So just a little fun tidbit that uh, you might want to keep in mind someday. Now we move on to anti-anginal medications. Um, these medications uh, are classified as coronary vasodilators. They're used to reduce the pain of angina. Um, by you know vasodilation, uh, there are two categories. There's the uh, the nitrate nit nitrites and nitrates, and there are the calcium channel blockers. Um, note that all vasodilators do di um, dilate cerebral and peripheral arteries as well as the coronary arteries, and that leads to side effects for both categories of um, headache and postural hypotension um, because of the vasodilation. The nitrites and nitrates, um, they decrease myocardial oxygen needs and dilate large coronary arteries, um, which uh, decreases the hypoxia of the heart muscle and reduces the pain of angina. There are, are a number of medications within this category, most notably the uh, nitroglycerin. 
Um, just some facts about nitroglycerin, just a, as a reminder, um, leave nitroglycerin tablets at the bedside for patients for whom they are prescribed unless it's counterindicated in the facility that you work for, um, you know, against policy. Encourage patients to tell you, um, as a nurse, when they have anginal pain and, uh, when they take the nitroglycerin and its effectiveness. Um, as a reminder, sublingual means under the tongue, and when chest pains occur, patients should rest and put one tablet under the tongue. It will dissolve quickly and be absorbed and acting within three minutes. Uh, patients may repeat the dose every five minutes for a total of three doses if the pain is not relieved the first time. If the pain is not relieved with, uh, within this regimen um, you know, after the three doses, uh, you, the patient should be seeking uh, better medical attention, not better, be medical attention immediately because of, um, it could be a myocardial infarction, um, which is outside of our scope of using just the nitroglycerin tablets. Um, nitroglycerin should be stored in a dark glass container in a cool place. And nitroglycerin is readily absorbed into many plastics and has a short shelf life of three months. So keep that in mind as well when using the tablets. Um, Nitroglycerin also comes in patch and ointment form. Um, ointment uh, should be applied to a hairless area of the skin to promote uniform absorption, and should be um, a new site should be used every new dose. Use the ruled applicator paper that comes with the ointment to measure the dose accurately, and um, use the applicator paper to apply a thin uniform layer of ointment and leave the applicator paper on the site and cover it with plastic wrap and secure with tape in order to keep it in place. Um, also note that uh, tolerance may develop with regular long-term use of nitrates. Tolerance can be avoided if nitrates have an off period, um, which may be scheduled right into your uh, NAR. Um, also, something to tell your patients who are on nitroglycerin, alcohol ingestion while on nitroglycerin can lead to severe postural, postural hypotension, especially if alcohol is ingested soon after applying the patch. Um, next, there's the calcium channel blockers. Um, they reduce oxygen demands by inhibiting the influx of calcium through the muscle cell. This dilates the coronary arteries and reduces the, the afterload, or the uh, systemic vascular resistance is reduced. Um, there are um, a number of medications uh, which should be given only by mouth, um, and you might note in, on the, the slide here that um, all the generic names uh, end with I-P-I-N-E, which is a good uh, remember, you don't think to remember. Also, there are a couple, as you can see, for Rapamil and Cardizem, um, which can be given uh, as IV and PO. And just as a reminder, um, for both the calcium channel blockers and the uh, nitrates and nitrates, um, adverse effects include headache and postural um, hypotension. Next, we move on to peripheral vasodilators. Um, the peripheral vasodilators act on the smooth muscle of blood vessels, causing peripheral vasodilation. They are used to treat peripheral vascular disorders such as uh, Reynolds disease, um, Bergner's disease, um, which is a uh, thromboangitis of bloody ends. You don't have to worry about remembering that, and uh, also uh, diabetic vascular disease and uh, varicose ulcers. Um, the two examples I have of, the, of these type of medications are uh, vasodilam and um, uh, the uh, vasospan, which also is, uh, goes by uh, uh, pavobid. Um, and uh, you know, just uh, the co um, common adverse effects of these would be um, headache, flushing, and GI symptoms. Um, uh, and this is because the vasodilators will dilate cerebral vessels and cause headache which will cause also the flushing in the face, and then the GS symptoms are just a common thing that you'll come across with most any medication.